Mark Edwards, welcome to Travelog and welcome to Shanghai. Shanghai is a city of superlatives. In Shanghai, stunning neoclassical buildings sit side by side with dazzling skyscrapers and superstructures. But above all, this city still retains the traditional aspects of Chinese culture that makes Shanghai exactly what it is, unique. Shanghai, sometimes known as the Paris of the East, is a city of almost 20 million people which has transformed itself from a fishing village into a bustling trade port and then world-famous business center. It's a city with visions of a warp speed future where old and new meld into one. Time to go and explore. All right, let's go and check out the Shanghai subway. So I got myself a Shanghai transportation card, London's got the Oyster, Hong Kong has got the Octopus. We can get all over the public transport, taxis, buses and the subway. Let's go. So with the Shanghai Metro service, you can get pretty much anywhere in the entire city. So if we have a look all the way on the west side to Hongqiao Airport, all the way to Pudong Airport here on the east side, we've got Nanjing Lu, Pudong, there are 11 lines overall, and we're going to head right into the city centre to Renmin Square right there. Like in many of China's major cities, traffic jams are commonplace here. But on the plus side, there's Shanghai's slick metro system, which is an efficient way to avoid them. Announcements are in both English and Chinese, and the trains operate daily from 5.30am to 11pm. So we're here in People's Square, or Renmin Guanshang, as it's known in Chinese. This is where over a hundred years ago, millionaires would ride their steeds whilst their wives looked on adoringly. These days, it's more of a focal point in terms of transport. Now, all of the main public lines of public transport converge into this one place. This is the absolute epicenter of the city as it is on all of the maps. Take a quick stroll from People's Square to Nanjing Lu, the famous old street that leads you to the Bund. So when you come to Shanghai, there's going to be so many places you have to see. And one of them is here on Nanjing Lu. This place, over 100 years ago, used to be the pre-eminent shopping and entertainment district in old Shanghai. Not much has changed, as you can see, except maybe some of the brands have got a bit more modern. East Nanjing Lu, from the park to the Peace Hotel, is often referred to as China's Golden Mile. It's a pedestrianised area that's almost always packed. And if you stroll down here at night, you'll be greeted by flashing neon lights and during the day, a carnival-like atmosphere. Make your way past the Peace Hotel towards Shanghai's number one must-see tourist attraction. The Bund is a two-kilometer sweep of historic buildings and a perfect introduction to Shanghai's glorious past. Filled with banks and institutions, to Europeans, it was Shanghai's Wall Street. Particularly beautiful at night, the best thing to do here is simply to stroll. So when you come to a new city, I always think it's worth, if you can, find yourself a local person who probably will be able to tell you some of the things about a particular city. In this case, Shanghai, I think it's particularly important because there's so much history and stories behind all of the fantastic architecture. I found a guy from my guidebook, who's a contributor, called Patrick. Hopefully, he'll be able to help us out. Patrick? Is that Mark? Hi. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. Great nice to meet, to meet you, you too. Please. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, lovely to meet you, Patrick. Great to, to meet you too, Mark. Thanks for agreeing to take the time to show me around and also, lovely place. I can see why you've chosen here to, to, to stop. Uh, M on the Bund is legendary in Shanghai. When it opened in 1999, it was the first independent restaurant on the Bund. It's conveniently located to where we hope we're going to take a little walk this afternoon. That sounds, you planned a good route for me. I'm looking forward to that. So this, this whole thing is the Bund Promenade, right? Right. And 
that's Pudong on the right there. Am that's I, that's I'm, the I'm modern doing... skyline of Shanghai, right? Okay. Now, where does the bun actually begin? Well, that's actually a very good question because there's no sign that says this is the bun. Oh, okay, okay. It really should start at uh, the corner of Yan'an Road yeah. and Zhongshan Dong E Road, which okay. is the, the name, for, name the bun, for the bun. Right. right. And so, actually, if we look down here, we can see the first bun building, number one, the old McBain okay. building, which was an office building in the old days. And then number two, which was the Shanghai Club, the British Club. So very important building in the <laughs> old days. Uh, it's being renovated into a hotel. Number three is called Three on the Bun. Very descriptive. That was also an uh, uh, office building in the old days. And we just had lunch at him on the bun, which is on top of number five, which was a Japanese shipping company. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let's see what, what else is... Uh, Great. What else? Yeah. Yeah, The building at number nine is an interesting one, Mark, because it's from what I call the second generation of bun buildings. You can see that it's made from brick, only goes up three floors, and it has those open verandas. Right. That's the former China Merchant Steamship Navigation Company. Okay, so I take it by former, it's not still that now? No, no, no. Like many of the other buildings on the Bund, it's been renovated into a destination, shopping, dining, or a, a entertainment area. That's a retail clothing shop now. Okay. And the next building over is one of the most important on the Bund, the former Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. Ah. And when it was built in 1923, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank wanted to make a statement because it was the most powerful financial institution in the Far East at that time. And this is one of the grandest on the Bund. Uh, if you have time, go in and take a look at the mosaics in the rotunda yeah. there. It's a functioning bank, so we, we can't <laughs> shoot in there yeah. now. The next building is also an important one, Mark. Yeah. That's the old... Customs House building from 1928, and it has a very distinctive clock tower on the top, chimes every 15 minutes. Everyone on the bun will always know what time it is. That's right, won't uh, get lost. What is that now? A number 17 with the AIA on top used to be the North China Daily News, the largest English language newspaper in old Shanghai, British owned. Uh, number 18 was the Chartered Bank, an important bank. Uh, today it's Bund 18, another destination shopping, yeah. dining, Cartier. entertaining, yeah. right? Okay. And then uh, the next one with the brick facade was the Palace Hotel, built in 1906. So if you had come to Shanghai in 1910, this would have been the That's place where, to stay. Where you would have stayed. What about what about this building here? Ah, well, this is perhaps the most iconic of all the Bund buildings, the Peace Hotel or as it was known before 1956, the Cathay Hotel. Uh, it was the flagship property of one of the great characters of old Shanghai, Sir Victor Sassoon. And there are lots of stories about that building. And the next one over, the Bank of China, is the only bun building that incorporates some Chinese elements into its design. Uh, both the Bank of China and the Peace Hotel, or the Cathay Hotel, were designed by the same architectural firm, right. Palmer & Turner, which was responsible for designing seven out of the 24, 24. Bund buildings. Ah. Right, so this is the Suzhou Creek. Okay. And the general post office in the distance. And right over here, uh, this gray building is really the last building on the Bund. That's yeah. the old British consul's residence. Okay. And the consulate, the old consulate, is uh, next to it. And these, those were both built in the 1870s. So those are the oldest Bun buildings that you'll see. Wow. So this is the end of the Bun. This is it. Suzhou Creek and the, great, uh, the general post office, and that's it. Okay. So I always think one of the best and most inexpensive ways of discovering a city is via their public bus service. And here in Shanghai, it's no different as long as you can avoid the rush hour. Now, much like the big double bus deckers in London, you might get a chance to see them like we have today. Nihao. So interestingly, you'll find along this street and in many parts of Shanghai what they call the parasol trees, which are these sort of clipped trees which you can also find in Paris. 
And if you can hear that in the background, that's just our way of making sure that you don't get lost on your whole way because the announcements are in English as well as Chinese, so you should be all right. The French concession is to Shanghai, what Kensington and Chelsea is to London. It's a residential, retail, restaurant and bar district covered with atmospheric tree-lined streets. Although you won't find it appearing on any Chinese maps, as it ranges elegantly through several different districts, this is the place to come if you really want to see the cream of Shanghai's old residential buildings. It's a trendy and happening enclave, which is a delight to explore on foot or by bike. It's a perfect opportunity to let my local guide, well, guide me. So a very interesting story is really across the street because this is uh, the old Song family compound. So each of the uh, famous Song sisters and the, their brothers had houses in this compound. Each one of them had their own house yeah, in and, the compound. And this one belonged to Song Mei Ling, who was Chiang Kai-shek's wife. So we can go over and take a look if you want. Yeah, let's, let's, have, let's go and have a check it out. So today, this building is part of the high school attached to the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. Ah, so it's okay. a school. So it's, I think it's probably quite a nice school to go to. Absolutely. This is used as a rehearsal hall now, so if you're a student of one of the instruments, you can come here all the time. All of the houses in this complex were built using materials imported from other countries. Each house was made in the architectural style of a different country. As a tip, it's worth looking for a converted boutique hotel to stay in when you're in Shanghai to really get an idea of the architectural elegance of the houses in this area. So this is Madame Song Qingling's former residence. There aren't any signs in English, so try and remember number 1843. Let's go and have a look. Born in Shanghai in 1893, Song Qingling is known to many as the mother of China. From an early age, she began to speak out against the dreadful conditions endured by women in her home country. She did so in a non-violent manner, expressing her ideals of liberty and equality. For seven decades, Song Qingling was active in both the political and the social arenas in China, becoming honorary president of the People's Republic. She lived here from 1948 to 1963, oh, yeah, and, and the house is now preserved as a monument to her. The trees are absolutely wonderful. It's a lot of space right in the center, right in the center of town. Yeah, and it's a gorgeous house, isn't it? Yeah. So mm. a... Yeah, we actually know the uh, granddaughter of the gentleman who built the house in 1920, and I'm going to send her a picture if I can get one. So this building ahead, just there, what's uh... Well, that's right. Uh, the French concession was not just about lovely mansions. There were also wonderful apartment houses uh, dotted throughout the, the neighborhoods. And this one was one of the most famous ones, the old uh, ISS apartments. Uh, but it was more commonly known as the Normandy. The Normandy? Why, why is it called that? Well, because this because was the, the golden age of cruise ships and the Normandy was the most famous of the French cruise ships. And people thought that the sharp uh, angle looked like the prow of that ship. Right, so they went for the Normandy rather than the Titanic, for instance. Probably a good idea. I think it had already sunk by that time. Wow. Yeah. So the, French the French concession is filled with little lanes and corners like Ferguson Lane. Here you'll find restored buildings housing, amongst other things, swanky bars, restaurants and art galleries. It's in these types of places where you can get a feel of the East meeting the West, which Shanghai is famous for. The high life is enjoyed today just as much as it was the last century. What do you feel about what, what is it that makes Shanghai unique or what it is? Well, I, obviously I like living here. It's a very stimulating place to live and I think part of the reason it feels so comfortable is that the Shanghai culture has been produced by kind of a melding of 
uh, foreign influences and Shanghai influences, and uh, the lifestyle is very comfortable. Cheers. Cheers. So I've done a little research and found out about a company called Shanghai Sideways and they specialize in taking tourists off the beaten track. Now, there's also an element of surprise. You're taken in a sidecar around the whole of Shanghai. Very excited, waiting for the guy to show up. Hopefully I won't have to wait too long. Yep. Hey, I'm Thomas. Thomas, yes. Thomas right. Assuming by the sidecar. Should I just get in and we hop go on and we'll go for an exploration of Shanghai. Right, Shanghai off the beaten track, let's go! Woo! So how many tours do you give per day roughly, Thomas? I guess right now we're at about five tours per day. Ah. And growing. And yeah. Do you ever do it in big groups? Yeah. Whether you're new to a city or a born and bred local. It's always good to try new things. In this case, our alternative means of visiting Shanghai has a little something for everyone. With Shanghai Sideways, you travel around the city checking out the most famous attractions as well as some more obscure hidden gems. Shanghai was divided in uh, four parts. You had the Chinese town, yeah. which is still now called the Old Town. You had the French concession where we are, the English concession, and then the American concession. And back in the time of the concessions, there was a saying that in Shanghai, English people know how to do business and French people know how to live. I'm taken to one of Shanghai's most famous residences, the postmodern greenhouse on Tongren Road. So, this is the greenhouse. What, this, this here? Yeah. So this place was built in 1938 by a uh, Hungarian architect and is one of a kind. Can we check it out? Can we go in and have a look? Sure, absolutely. See, see what it's like inside? The beauty is in the inside. Yeah, cool. So this house was one of the first houses in China to have uh, air conditioning. First house in China to have a private elevator, yeah. and one of the first houses in China to have an interior garage, which, when you think about it, back then was like a bedroom for a car, quite insane. Putting your car to sleep, I think, probably wouldn't have gone down that well in those days. Absolutely. It was the most modern house in Asia some 80 years ago, and it still doesn't look out of place today, and probably won't in a hundred years' time. The owner, Wu Tong Wen, was a rich businessman who made his fortune making paint, the most widely sold being green colored. Hence why he had the house painted green. It was designed by the Hungarian architect Ladislav Hudek, who was also responsible for the Normandy building we saw earlier. How do you know all of these places? Well, the best way to discover, to explore cities by getting lost, and I did my share of getting yeah. lost. <laughs> so, Mark, this is the International Post Office of Shanghai, okay. and we're going to go to the rooftop because there's my favorite view of Shanghai. All right. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You're going to be tasty warm, is it? <laughs> It's an interactive trip where you're paired with a knowledgeable tour guide. This is your favourite view of Ab Shanghai? Absolutely. This is the International Post Office, which is actually quite an old building, yeah. and which gives you a fantastic view of Pudong, Lu Jiazui, so over there, the financial district, yeah. and Pushi, where we are, which is the older part of Shanghai. Very clear as well. Ranging from one hour to four hours, you can take a trip with up to 60 people where you'll ride around in a convoy. It costs just under 150 US dollars for the full four hour interactive tour. And do, you, do you often bring people up here? Yeah. Uh, when you, when you, know, you stop off and yeah. bring them up here? Ready? Let's go! They'll take you to a swanky Art Deco building housing several restaurants and cafes and a place for holding art exhibitions. It's called 1933 and was built from Portsmouth concrete imported from the UK. 
So this place was reopened to public in 2007 as a creative center. And before that, no one could come in. No one could ever go. Now hold on, hold your horses. Check out here, the perspective down there is quite unique. So you can yeah, see yeah. This used to be Shanghai's only fully incorporated slaughterhouse, where everything from holding, slaughtering and packaging was taken care of here. That's it? Well, yeah, Mark, this is the end of our tour. Uh -huh. Hope you liked it. Yeah, I, had, I had a fantastic time, Thomas. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Cheers. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Listen to the sounds of old Shanghai with the boats, clock towers and trams. So it might seem like I've time travelled some 70 or 80 years to one of Shanghai's most famous old streets. That is Nanjing Lu. I of course haven't time travelled. We're in the present day, but we're here at the Shanghai Film City where they recreate some of the most famous sets from some of the greatest Chinese films of all time. What do you think? Shanghai Film City was opened in 2001 and is one of the largest studios in Asia. Situated in the Songjiang district, it's a journey of around an hour from Shanghai city centre. The whole park is laid out like a miniature old Shanghai. You'll be able to find fully furnished old style buildings, railroad cars and old streets. So if you're feeling lazy as I almost always am, you can hop onto this special type of transportation and have some special companions as well from the looks of things. There's another reason to head out this way, as you might be able to chance upon the actual shooting of a movie or TV program and rub shoulders with the stars. You might be able to spot the outdoor sets of Kung Fu Hustle or The Mummy 3, which were all filmed here. The studios open from 8am to 5pm and the admission fee is 50 RMB. The film city has given me a taste of the old school lifestyle. Let's see if we can find more in the city centre. So I've made it to Shanxi Nanlu to come and visit one of the symbols of old Shanghai architecture. It can be found all over the city, but here it's one of the best preserved. That is the Shukumun or the stone gates that can be found. This place is called the Cité Bourgogne, which has been around for 80 years. A bit loud. And many of the inhabitants here are stone ones that were here 80 years ago. Let's go and have a look. The most typical Shanghainese architectural form is the Longtang or Lane neighborhood. Over 70% of Shanghai's residents were born and raised in these narrow lanes with their tightly knit communities. Each of the dwellings has a shukuman, which is a stone gate entrance, and the lanes are lined by an exterior wall. In these places, everyone knows everyone else. So this is incredible, it's a Monday morning, it's, it's just gone 9 o'clock, we're in one of the old quarters and this is how it used to be in the old days, people playing around, lots of children's games, it's so lively, it's full of old people, all retired, all put on by the communities, let's go and have a look. Come down here on a Monday morning and you'll see how lively the atmosphere is for the old retired folk in La Cité Bourgogne. Organised by the community, the residents have a chance to win various prizes in the form of household goods. It's a lot of fun, so if you have the chance, come down here for a taste of real Shanghai life. I'm pretending I'm... So I'm having a little uh, queuing session, about to have a game, and uh, just going to try and ask some questions. More famous for being fast paced and modern, Shanghai still retains the essence of a traditionally Chinese city. So make sure you don't miss out on those older parts of town when you make your way here.
Shanghai is an extremely mixed city. On the one hand, you've got the international side with the five-star hotels, the large malls and the western restaurants. On the other side, you've got the slightly more cultural aspect with the incredible architecture and the old houses that you simply have to go in and take a peek at. Unfortunately, got to wrap up the show for today. Hope you've enjoyed the last half an hour and I'll look at an older, more traditional side of Shanghai life. I'm Mark Edwards and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travel Log.